let's do this. If I gave you something like this, I'm just going to go, let's go 3, oops, 3x plus, nope, let's go minus 6y plus 12 equals 0. Here's what I want. I want you to graph this. I want you to find the x and y intercepts. All of the above. Graph it by, let's do this. Let's just graph it by finding the x and y intercepts. See if you can do that. Okay, go. First off, is this a line, yes or no? Yeah. All in favor, thumbs up. All opposed, thumbs down. Have no clue, thumbs sideways. Okay, what's the biggest exponent either the x or the y have? What's the biggest exponent? If they both have an exponent of 1, what's the graph? It's a linear. So you know it's a line. Is it in slope-intercept form? Actually, this is called standard form of a line, which I think is worthless, but... Okay, but it's still a line, and you need to recognize that because for the millionth time, if the biggest exponent on an x and y is 1, then it's a line. Now, let me ask you this, those of you with no common sense. If I wanted to find the x-intercept, what's the y value of anything on the x-axis? Isn't the y, isn't this point 3, 0, this 4, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 0? Do you notice the pattern? What's the y value of anything on the x-intercept? It's 0, correct? So to find the x-intercept, what do you think I could plug in for y? Yeah. 0. So if I plugged in 0 for y, I would have 3 times x minus 6 times 0 plus 12 equals 0, which would be 3x that's gone, plus 12 equals 0, so 3x equals a negative 12, x equals a, so the point negative 4, 0 would be my x-intercept. Now let me ask you this, what is the x value for every single y-intercept? Zero. 0. Isn't this the point 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, negative 2, negative, isn't that the, so what can I, to find the y-intercept, what can I plug in for x? Zero. So what's 3 times 0? So I have a negative 6y plus 12 equals 0. So a negative 6y equals a negative 12, so y equals 2. So the point when x is 0, y is 2. There's my y-intercept. Can I just connect the dots since I know it's a line? Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Moral of the story, if it's not in slope-intercept form and you want to know the x and the y-intercepts, you plug to find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x. To find the x-intercept, you plug 0 in for y. Okay. That's part of today's lesson. Now let's get to the more fun part because I have a doozy for you in just a little bit. Let's say I gave you something along the lines of... Oh, I don't want to start that hard. Let's start here. Let's say I gave you y equals 2x subtract 4, y equals a negative 3x plus 1, Please tell me where those two graphs cross. Two ways to solve this. Could I have graphed both of those? So if I graph both of those, okay, the first one crosses at a negative 4 and the slope is 2, correct? So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. I have this nice line right here. The second one, okay, crosses at a positive 1 and goes down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Do I see where they cross? Yeah. They cross right there at the point 1, negative 2. Now, 
that's graphingly a way of solving that. That's not always going to work to the best. Okay, and I'll give you examples here in just a second. What's another way I could have solved this? If I want to know where this graph equals this graph, can't I just say where does 2x minus 4 equal a negative 3x plus 1 and solve? Add 3x, add 3x, that would give me 5x, that's gone. Add 4, add 4, that would give me 5, that's gone. So x equals what? So when x is 1, how do I find the y value? Does it matter which one I plug in? Nope, I'm going to get the same thing no matter what, 1, negative 2. That's not bad. Okay, let me give you another one. Try to do it the non-graphing way. Try to do it the algebra way. Let's say I gave you y equals 3x subtract 8 and y equals x subtract 8. If you had 0, negative 8, you would be right. You get a ding-ding. Now, without looking, how would you have known that it's 0, negative 8? The y-intercepts are what? Both the, same. Both the same. So that means they have to cross there. How many of you figured that out before I said something? No. One thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, what happens if I give you something like this? What happens if I give you x plus... 2y equals 6, and 2x plus y equals 9. See if you can solve that, please. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. Okay. Obviously, these are both lines because the exponent is 1, right, on everything. So... Okay, we have two methods. We can use substitution or elimination. Okay, so if I did substitution, substitution would look like this, one of the two ways. So let's say I wanted to get x by itself here. So that means x is equal to a negative 2y plus 6. Do you agree with that? Yeah. What can I plug in for this x? negative 2y plus 6. So I could go 2 times a negative 2y plus 6. Then I still have this plus y equals 9. And then I'd have a negative 4y plus 12 plus y equals 9. And then I'd have a negative 4y plus 1y is a negative 3y plus 12 equals 9. Correct? Subtract 12, so I'd have a negative 3y equals a negative 3, so y equals 1. And then what would I do with the y? To which one? It doesn't matter. If I plug in 1 here, I would have 2x plus 1 equals 9, so 2x equals 8, so what's x equal? So the point 4, 1. That's substitution. That's a long process. I prefer elimination. Okay, here's elimination. I have x plus 2y equals 6. I have 2x plus y equals 9. I want to eliminate either the x or the y. It doesn't matter which one. I just want to eliminate it. So I might do something like this. Let's change color. Let's say I multiplied all of this by a negative 2. Why did I put, you'll see why I picked a negative 2 in just a second. Do the distributive property. What's a negative 2 times x? What's a negative 2 times 2y? What's a negative 2 times 6? Now, when I add these together, what happens to my x's? And now I have 1y minus plus a negative 4y, or minus 4y is a negative 3y. 9 plus a negative 12 is a negative 3. That looks a lot like that. So what's y equal? And then what do I do then? 
plug it back in, does it matter to which one? Nope, nope you're going to get four. That's elimination. Okay? Sometimes you're going to have to maybe multiply both equations by something. So, for example, so like if I gave you something along the lines of, let's go, i got to find one. No, nope, nope. Ching, 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 ching. Too easy, nope. Nope. Hmm, can't find one. I don't know if this is going to come out perfect or not. I'm just going to give you one. Let's say I give you 2x minus 3y equals 8. And let's go 5x plus 2y equals a negative 10. And we'll just walk through this one together because who knows how ugly this is going to be. Okay. Now, I really don't want to do substitution here. Do you know why I don't want to do substitution? Because when I did substitution here, do you see how either the x or the y was by itself? So it's pretty easy to, do, to get them by itself, right? Yeah. If I look here and I try to get the, in either one, try to get the x or the y by itself, am I going to have this ugly equation when I'm done? Yeah, yeah because like to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract 2x and then divide by a negative 3. And that's going to give me 2 thirds x minus 8 thirds. Do you really want to substitute that in for anything? No. no. So we're going to have to do elimination. Okay? Now, 2 does not go into 5 perfectly unless you want to multiply by 2.5, which no one really wants to do. Okay? And I can't do it with the y's, so I might have to multiply both of them by something. So. With me, I'm probably going to get rid of the y's first because one's already negative and one's positive already. They're already opposite signs. Does that make sense? So what's a number that 3 and 2 go into? So if I multiply this by 2, which is going to give me 4x minus 6y equals 16. You agree with that? What am I going to multiply the other one by? If I multiply it by 3... That gives me 15x plus 6y equals a negative 30. What happens to my y's now? So now I have 19x equals, that crosses out, a negative 14. Divide by 19, divide by 19. x is a negative 14 19 Yes, that is my x coordinate. And how am I going to find my y coordinate? plug it back in. Yes, I would expect you to be able to plug that back in and find an answer. Okay? Does that make sense? But wait. Pause for one second. What if I give you something like this? X plus 2Y plus Z equals 10. And then I give you 2x, subtract y, plus 3z, equals a negative 5. And then I give you 2x, minus 3y, minus 5z, equals 27. If there's three variables, guess how many equations you're going to have to have? Three. If there's two variables, how many equations are you going to have to have? Two. Now, does anybody recognize this? Did Haddock have you do this in Algebra 1? You had two. I knew that, but did you ever do a three? The why I'm showing you this is next year you'll have to do this for the college class. Okay? We're going to use elimination. You're going to want to write this down. Okay? So, here's the deal. We're going to try and take these three equations and narrow it down so I get down to two equations, which means I've, I've gotten rid of one of the variables. Because once I get to here, I can do that fairly. It's not hard math, right? So, 
I need to get rid of the same variable twice. Which variable might be the easiest to get rid of? You could get rid of the x fairly easy. Y. I'm going to get rid of the y, I think. So I'm going to take these two equations. So I have x plus 2y plus z equals 10. And so to get rid of the y, what am I going to multiply the second equation by? I'm going to multiply this by 2, right? So that gives me 4x minus 2y plus 6z equals a negative 10. Are we okay with that? Yes. Now, if I add those together, I get 5x, my y's cancel out, I get 7z equals 0. Are you okay with that? Yes? yes? Okay. So I've got one equation with just two variables. I need another equation with the same two variables. So I think I'm going to use I'm going to use these two. Okay. So what am I going to times the middle equation by to cancel out the negative 3y? Three. Three. If I times it just by 3, I'm going to have a negative 3y plus another negative 3y. That's not going to cancel out. So I'm going to times this by negative 3. That's going to give me a negative 6x plus 3y subtract 9z equals what, 15? And then I have this, the third equation that I can just write down below it. And I can add those together. And I'll pause, give you a second to catch up. A negative 6x plus 2x is a negative 4x, you agree? Mm -hmm. Y's cancel out. Minus 14z equals what? 42. There's my second equation. Are we okay with that? Yeah. So look at the two equations I have. I have 5x, let's go to a different color. I have 5x plus 7z equals 0, and I have a negative 4x minus 14z equals 42. Right? Yeah. What can I multiply the top by to get rid of the z's? Two. So if I multiply the top by 2, right? Not square. Let me write this. I won't be confused. If I multiply it by 2, that would give me what? That would give me 10x plus 14z still equals 0. So what's a negative 4x plus 10x? 6x. What happens to the z's? Yeah. What's 42 plus 0? If 6x equals 42, what's x equal? Seven. So now I know x is 7. What can I do with that x? Plug it in. Plug it in. To which one? Top one. It matter. Doesn't matter, but let's plug it into the top. What's five? If I plug in 7 for x right there, what's 5 times 7? 35 plus 7z equals 0. How do I solve for z? Can I subtract 35 from both sides? Do you understand where I got it, Avonlea? I plugged, x is 7, right? Yeah. I plugged 7 in for that x right there. Okay. So subtract 35, subtract 35. 7z equals a negative 35. So what does z equal? Five. Negative 5. So now all I need is what? So what am I going to do with the x and the y, or x and the z? Plug them in. What's probably going to be the easiest one to plug it into? The top, I would. So if I plugged it into the top, which is right here, what's x? 7 plus 
2y plus negative 5 equals 10. Right? If I combine my like terms, what's 7 plus a negative 5? So 2y plus 2 equals 10. So 2y equals 8. So y equals what? Ding, 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 ding. You are done. Pause, let you get caught up. Okay, first one. If I give you something like, oh, let's go 3x minus 13y equals 39. I want you to find the x and y intercepts and then graph. Number two, I'm going to give you, oh, let's go, y equals x plus 3 and y equals 5x, oh, Let's not do that. Let's go. Pause for a sec. Okay, solve that system. Number three. Let's go x plus 2y equals 6. 2x plus y equals 9. Number four, let's go. Oh, we gotta do one of these, of course. You're not gonna like me, but I don't care. Let's go four thirds x plus one fifth y equals three. And let's go two thirds x Subtract 3 fifths y equals 5, because you got to have fractions, right? And then number 5 we'll put over here, and we will find a nice good one for you, the one you've been waiting for. Let's go 3x plus y plus z equals four. Ah. So there's your homework. I will pause this so you can write it down.